Welcome to Let Go, Let EFT, where we are learning and leaning in with you, with your hosts, Michelle Puster and Dr. Laura Spiller. EFT is a beautiful model helping people connect with themselves and the people that matter the most, developed by Dr. Sue Johnson. Hi, good morning, Dr. Spiller. Hello. Glad to be back in this new year, getting to talk more about EFT and how to ground ourselves and how to move through the model and feel like we're actually like helping people. Yes. And this appropriate. We're talking about how to start a stage one session in EFT and what can be tricky about it and some of the things that we've learned along the way that has helped us. Mm hmm make that a little bit easier and help get focused right away. So what are some of the things that you feel like are hard about starting an EFT session for new EFT therapists? I think um, to start a session already right from the start, sort of focused is difficult because it goes against sort of all of our social conditioning. You know, mm-hmm. the chit chat and establish, you know, rapport and, you know, find out how their week was. Um, so I think that's part of it. It just sort of feels less sociable or somehow like too intense or unfriendly. I mean, it goes against some of that core conditioning. That right. Uh, yes. And I'm not saying that you just jump in and say, you know. Right. Right. It's like, you know. Right. But, um, yes. Yeah, I think we all, you know, we ask the common, how are you? Um, How was your day? What about this weather? You know, the kind of, yeah, the social easing that a little bit of anxiety that everybody might be feeling coming into the room and, and Mm -hmm. couples, some couples could stay in that chit chat place for a while. Yes. Yes. Well, I mean, I guess that's why I think it's important. Um, that it's important because one, when you start out with all the chit chat, you're, you're teaching them about what's expected and what therapy session, how it goes. So they come in and kind of prepare to tell you their stories about the week. And it really, when you don't have a focus right from the start, it invites the cycle to start the session. So, you know, Mm -hmm. how do they start it? If you let them with their usual positions and roles. So the complaint, the pursuer will start with content related complaints and the withdrawal will start with defensive explanations. <laughs> you know? right. and or uh, <laughs> withdraw, withdraw couple will tell you of nothing about their cycle and how everything is going well. And they will completely avoid talking about anything related to anything. Yes. So, yeah, I mean, it really is on us to bring in a focus and a structure that creates safety from the very beginning of the session. Yes. And so, yeah, I guess some other, other things that make it hard that come up for me, um, you know, kind of having, thinking about what is our focus, what is our, um, like, what do we want to focus on during that session? And is there anything in particular that like that you do to help you kind of think about what, how do I want to focus this session? Where do I want to start? Yeah, I think that, you know, if I can, it really helps to review the notes from the last session. And it really Mm -hmm. helps me when I'm writing my note to think what I'm going to need to remember and hear right before the next session so that I'm cued in to, you know, the focus that would be most helpful. Um, How about for you? Yeah, that's. Same. I think that's a really good point. Our, it's how we take our notes can be a continuation of how we start the next session. So yeah. for me, one of the main ways that I take my notes is I think about, okay, what do I know about their cues so far in stage one? What do I know about their behavior so far? What do I know about their perception so far? What do I know about their secondary emotion? What do I know about their primary emotion? And wherever there's gaps, it's like, okay, well, that's a great place to start because I don't, I've heard a lot about their behaviors or I've heard a lot about their perceptions, but I don't really know what the cues are. So 
let me investigate cues and see where that takes me because I really want to be curious about how do you guys go from okay to not okay? What and and I also want them to orient to what are their cues. So yes, ideally I would be able to read the session notes before and get me oriented into their cycle, into um, the moves that I understand so far, you know, trying to imagine myself in each person's position. Jim Thomas taught me a great um, tool and supervision. He, he, at the end of the session, he looks for stuck, poignant, and vulnerable. So during that whole session, after I've taken the notes on everything that was seemed relevant and their cycle. I'll think about where do I see them stuck? Was there a po poignant moment that really just like got me or got one of them? Or was there a real uh, significant moment of vulnerability that really um, stood out and was really significant? And so that can be, that might be one way that I start the session is after we've kind of gotten the, how are you things out of the way, I'll say, gosh, you know, from last session, what really stood out to me was when Jim, you said this, oh my gosh, that really stood, st stayed with me this week. What is it? And, and I'll kind of expand on that. And I'll say, what is it like for me to hear you all for me to say that? And also I might same thing with, gosh, this is where I really noticed that we were stuck last week. Does it feel like we're still stuck there? Mm. How was that stuck place this week? Or um, mm -hmm. I might say, this is what I understand about your cycle so far. So what I'm hearing is on the outside, you push to try to talk and to try to get to a better place. And when you push to try to get to a better place, you feel like you're being criticized and you feel attacked. So you start to turn down the volume and you start to kind of get quiet. And then when they get quiet, when your partner gets quiet, you get more, your alarm bells get turned on even more. And so you get more upset and, and things get stirred up even more for you. So you press and push this conversation. Am I getting that? How does that feel for your cycle so far? Does that feel like is that cycle coming up at all? Did that come up this week? Did anything feel differently to you? So I will like go to something from last session or the way I understand the cycle so far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How, do, how do you, what are some of the strategies well, really you like, use? Well, I really like that because I think that is keeping the thread, it's keeping them in you on the EFT roadmap. I mean, it is really helping um, focus the session, focus that, you know, the, the beginning of the session. I am imagining that for new EFT therapists, that there might even be a little apprehension coming up right now, as you talk about that, because I think part of the self of the therapist that comes up and makes starting sessions difficult is sometimes, especially in the beginning, we don't know where we are. Yes. In the mm -hmm. cycle, right? We don't know their cycle. We don't know sort of, you know, what we want the focus to be, how we're supposed to lead them, right? Um, so I think, um, and then when we are apprehensive and we're unsure, it is so easy to fall back on that programming, which is, how was your week? Oh, okay, mm -hmm. you were looking at school choice and, you know, tell me more about that and, you know, getting into content. I mean, it's so, there's some comfort about content because often it's what our clients want to talk about and it helps us sort mm -hmm. of make this friendly connection with them. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And we know how to do that dance with people. Um, and right. so, you know, it, it, it does um, come to hand easily when we are unsure about what the focus is. Um, so I love how you talked about what you look for you know, mm -hmm. in the session as you're writing notes so that you can write down a few things that let you have something at hand, easy to access in the probably three minutes that you have mm -hmm. between clients. Mm -hmm. You've gone to the bathroom and had a drink and all that to be able to figure out like, how do I want to start this session? Um, mm -hmm. And you reflect what happened in the last session and then say, how are you thinking about that? How did it come up this week? So that you're you know, focusing what happened outside of session on this specific 
thread that you're unknotting for them. Um, right. Session to session. So I really like that. Um, you know, I think maybe one thing that we can also offer are just some hand questions. If you don't have mm-hmm. time, three minute <laughs> review of your notes. Um, if you panic, I mean, it's really good to have a question, you know, or mm-hmm. two that you don't, you can just go to. And I think mm-hmm. you just one, like, what did you notice about how was your cycle coming up this week? What did you notice about the pattern, the negative pattern that you can get, you know, stuck in this week, mm-hmm. even if you're not sure how to reflect all of that. Um, and ideally you're working on that and you're able to, to do some of that, even if it's just a little bit that, you know, and notice about their cycle. Right. If not, you can still start with what, you know, how are you understanding your cycle? What about the negative impact? negative interaction pattern, you know, did you notice this week? Um, Because really that's one of our first goals is getting them um, slowing down, noticing, increasing their awareness of their moves. Right. Having the 30,000 foot view of their cycle and their interactions versus the just in it and it ping ponging back and forth and just being in reactive mode. Because it's really different to zoom out and say, oh yeah, I do do that. And it's, you can see them like they'll, they'll notice very quickly how it's kind of the same thing. Oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes over and over again, they, they pretty much know what they're going to do. They pretty much know what their partner is going to do. And it can feel, it can still feel like a tornado when you're in it. But when you zoom out and you say, oh yeah, that's when I do this, right? That's different. Okay. Well, tell me about what's happening inside that causes you to do this. So that 30,000 foot view helps couples so much rather than just being in, because if we, if we have the, otherwise they'll just be in the reactive place in the session still, right. Rather than reflecting on what they do. Right. Right. So yeah. And if you, you know, start the session that way, every time, at least you are telling them how important it is. Mm-hmm. To notice what they're doing there mm-hmm. even that you're going to ask that is mm-hmm. going to help them notice it right and I think you made a good point that um of course it's co- totally normal to be nervous I mean I there's many a times that I will walk into what well, walking to through the lobby that I can feel my anxiety you know uh, other um trainers have said, like, if you're feeling anxiety in your body as a therapist, there's likely trauma in the room. It also can be, like you said, when you're new and you're got like, okay, I learned this, I learned that. What am I going to, you know, it can be, there's a lot to think about and to hold. So there's a lot of reasons for us as therapists to feel uneasy. And the more that we think about these kind of things ahead of time, the more we can feel grounded, which yeah. will help ground the client's and I, um, I like to think of it as like, a, um, like putting together a big puzzle and it mm-hmm. feels like, right. you know, the clients come in with blow dryers and just like, like blow all these puzzle pieces everywhere. Or when, when we're first meeting them, it's like, everybody's throwing puzzle pieces around the room and the, the cycle reframe, like just to, it's like looking for the edges of the puzzle. Where are the cues? Yes. Like I can start looking for, oh, so you, this all got started when you wanted to go to that party. Okay. So that's when things went from okay to not okay. Tell me about Mm -hmm. him asking to go to this party that got things really stirred up for you. Now I've found a puzzle piece and I've gotten curious about it. And for me that those puzzle pieces of the cue, the behavior, the perception, when, when they're like blowing puzzle pieces around the room, it always helps orient me to where can I begin? Where do I want to learn more? Like, to me, that is so grounding to have these like, you know, cornerstones that I'm going to keep coming back to when otherwise it's just like information blowing around the room, which is so overwhelming. Love that. I feel I feel calmer just thinking about it, right that, that I have a way to kind of make sense of all the info coming at me, looking for those handholds. 
Yeah, I was just thinking as you were talking about how common it is, right? Even despite our best efforts for clients to come in and want to tell us content related stuff. Um, and we do have another episode on the importance of using content and how you can use the content. But this mm-hmm. is another place, especially in the beginning, where you want to take control of the session and you want to help structure things for them and for you to to just have a tool that when they're telling you about their week, that you can bring it back to a present moment focus just mm-hmm. with a simple question of, you know, slow down, let me know what's happening on the inside for you as you're telling me about this story, mm-hmm. right? How is it? What's happening for you as you're telling me about the week? So you can cue them into a little bit more of, you know, what's happening um, mm-hmm. if you get caught up, you know, if b- despite your best intention to kind of focus it on their relational dance, you know, if you still end up getting lots of content and details, you can kind of bring it back to their, their relational dance um, mm-hmm. with bringing it present moment. Right now you're telling me this, what are you hoping that I will hear? What are you hoping that your partner will hear? You know, mm-hmm. what's your part as you say this? Um mm-hmm you know, some way of kind of bringing it back to the here and now of their relational dance, their cycle. Are there any other questions that you use or that you've read that are helpful in that, like in the those first five, 10, 15 minutes of the session? Yeah. And we'll put these in the show notes so that you can kind of jot them down um, if you need to, but, um, and I'm going to credit them. Um, my mentor, Sharon Lee, um, she gives um, to, um, you know, tell me where you lose the connection and what happens as mm-hmm. a way to start a stage one session. Um, also, you know, what have you been doing with your emotions this week? What have you noticed about how what you're doing with your emotions is impacting your partner? Mm, I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then some others from Catherine Ream. She um, recently had an email to the EFT Cafe, which is a great program um, mm-hmm. with stage one questions. Um, have you noticed this week when your cycle got kicked up? So that's mm-hmm. kind of what we've been saying. Um, did you notice how you coped with your emotions and the impact on your partner? So honing them in on, you know, were you more aware of your dysregulation? That's not usually the word I would use, but, you know, but that's, you know, the idea is, you know, were you aware of what kind of what you were saying? Were you more aware of what was happening when there was this trigger and your emotions were coming up and how were you, how you could be caught off balance with that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, were you able to slow your cycle down this week? Uh, so I probably wouldn't ask that if, unless I knew that there was a good chance that they were able to, um, you know, but certainly what happened when the cycle came up since we last met. Right. Yeah. And sometimes I'll ask, did anything go different with your cycle? Did you notice it? And, and I like to, you know, celebrate even if they, they noticed it and they thought about it, right? Like, because that gives a pause. If they noticed they were in the cycle and they had a thought about that, that is a pause between trigger and behavior, which may have become automatic, right? So that's significant. I mean, that's where it starts. You know, I like to say to clients, like, what would it be like to say, oh, we're caught in the cycle. And sometimes clients will say, they, but it, it, um, it's one of those things that's easier said than done, right? And it doesn't just help couples, like all of a sudden, all the stuff melts away. No, that's not how it goes. If they're able to say that, things still get stirred up. So yes, those are awesome questions that can, and uh, I like the idea of writing a couple of those questions down at the top of our clipboard. I have written down those, you know, cue behavior, you know, those parts of the cycle that I'm looking for, because um, as the energy can get turned up in the room, like we need help to orient ourselves and to stay oriented and grounded. So Yes. You might think for yourselves and, and maybe you guys can share with us and in, in the comments, 
is there a tool that you use to help start the session? Is there a question that just really is great in stage one? And of course, the beginning of stage one might be different, of course, than like after 10 sessions into stage one or so, right? So um, what are what are things that you all are doing that are helping you get those sessions started in a focused way that help you come into the room and feel grounded, that help you reground maybe if, if things have gotten like all stirred up? Um, yeah, is there anything else like that that you can think of, Laura, that um, as far as an action step? You know, I, that's, um, I think that's a pretty good summary of the things that are helpful. I mean, I guess the one thing, um, this is a little bit, <laughs> a little bit, um, different, but just ending your sessions on time. So you have time to make those notes for yourself that is going to help mm -hmm. you the net with the next session. Um, yes. So that's been probably one of the most important things for me to help me feel a little bit more grounded, and, you know, and taking care of myself. If I end the session on time, I can take mm -hmm. care of myself by giving me time to do those important things like run to the restroom and fill up my cup of water, but also to take the five minutes to jot down the key things that happen in the session that I want to remember for the next one. Yes. Even if you're yes. not the perfect note, even if maybe you've got to come back to it and fill in some details, if you can take a few minutes to just jot down the things you want to make sure you remember at the start of the next session, you're going to do, you're going to really support yourself in this work. Yes, definitely. I will. And that's hard to do. It's hard to end hard to on time. We're all doing our best to try to, to try to follow that really good advice because that's taking care of ourselves, like you said, and actually giving us the time to do what we need to do. And I would also add getting, this sounds so silly, but getting to the office or wherever you're doing your sessions with enough time to read the notes. Like I, ideally I will sit down and, and read the notes for everybody, either for the morning or even for the whole day, depending on what the day looks like before I see the first person, because stuff happens, right? Like stuff happens. There's not always time between sessions. Good so point. if I can get to my office early enough and say, okay, who am I seeing today? Let me pull out their sheet. And I oftentimes will rewrite like the bare bones of the cycle to help me orient to, okay, when they come in, this is where we're at. When they come in, this is where we're at. And that helps me, even though it's a lot of like extra yeah. writing, yeah. um, like we all think differently. Our brains all work differently. What's what works best for you is going to be different for someone else. So you just play around with it. Like I've played around with different ways to write notes, different ways. And this is what's working right now. I read over the notes, I track their cycle and I have that in front of me before they come in. And I do that at the beginning of each day. And that makes a huge difference having that time to, um, and not thinking like I'm going to have enough time between sessions, because what if I don't, right? <laughs> what if I don't? And then, so it's easier to like get there early and look at everybody's, but again, everybody's yeah, different. Really so like find what works for you. That's the main thing is find what works for you. Yeah. And that we've got to help ourselves with the organization. It's not going to just happen. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And look to, if you have a supervisor I, I mean, at times, I don't know, right. Doesn't want to sit down to do that and sort of thinks, Oh, I'm going to, it's going to, I'm just going to be in the flow. I'll remember. Um, and that's not true. <laughs> yeah. Got, you know, it's, it doesn't happen that way. Got to take the time and sit down and, and make myself jot those notes. Yes, for sure. I'm always grateful to myself when I have done that. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I would say if you're working with a supervisor, ask them, how do you start your, how do you start your sessions? Like if you're working with a trainer, that's a super, that's your supervisor, ask them, like, these are people with lots of experience. They're going to have their own unique ways and you just kind of start to pull and choose and pick what works with you. And now what's really cool is there's so many people writing about EFT you can Google and probably there's a few blog posts on how to start an EFT session. And that those things can be really helpful in kind of figuring out how do I want to start my EFT session? 
what works best for me? Try it one way for a while, try something else for a while. And all those things, um, kind of help you find your groove and it, and if you're anything like me, it will change over time. Right. Well, hopefully we can hear from you in the comments about what, um, has been, you know, what you find helpful or other questions you have about starting sessions. Yes, definitely. And other topics that you want us to cover, mm -hmm. share in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear your great strategies that you have of starting your sessions. See you next time. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Ooh, ooh, ooh.